Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to London. Just across the road from the Wembley Arena, of course, around six years ago, the scene of Katie Taylor's professional debut. You know the story. We started with a dream, a dream that was sold to me by Katie Taylor, headlined at that arena six years ago. And this weekend, after selling out Madison Square Garden in one of the greatest fights we've ever seen against Amanda Serrano, she will return to the Wembley Arena to defend this time her undisputed lightweight world championships, live and exclusive on the zone all around the world. It's been an incredible few weeks in Brisbane, Australia and Mexico last week, of course, Wembley this week, next week, one of the cards of the year in Abu Dhabi with Bivol Ramirez, the undisputed fight between Chantel Cameron and Jessica McCaskill, Zelfa Barrett goes for the world title. The week after that, we're in Cleveland. We have an unbelievable week off after that, November 19th, but then we're back in this arena for the return of Dillian White on DAZN against the unbeaten American Jermaine Franklin as he looks to tee up a second fight with Anthony Joshua. After that, we move over to Phoenix for the epic trilogy between Estrada and Chocolatito, and we finish on December 10 with Josh Warrington defending his world title in Leeds and probably end up doing one on December 17th as well. But all about this weekend at Wembley Arena live on DAZN, we've got an incredible card, of course, head headlined by Katie Taylor. But before we go to the top table, I want to talk about a number of fights in front of us. Some very important fights, the beginning of some journeys, some great young prospects, some of the biggest ticket sellers in the world, not just in, in UK boxing as well. And I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with Jordan Reynolds. Jordan, welcome. Um, not many will know about the heartache that you had last time earlier in the year when you were just, I think, a week away from fighting at Alexandra Palace on the John Ryder Danny Jacobs card. You ruptured your bicep in the iBox gym. You'd already sold 500 tickets, and it was a big moment for you to, to fight on the Matrim and DAZN platform. It's been a brutal few months, but you're back, ready to go. Huge support on Saturday and ready to, to restart this professional journey. Yeah, I was going to say um, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I'm still believing in me. It's been a mad few months, but I couldn't just shy away. It was character testing. I was looking just to make it Saturday. I feel relieved to be here. It's been drama after drama to start my career. So come this Saturday, I'm going to put on a good job, represent my people, and uh, do everyone proud. Now you had a great amateur record, obviously with England and, and GB as well. But I know you felt that you had some frustrations and it was a bit stop-start in the, the pro ranks. How difficult was it to overcome that injury? I was gutted for you and, and I know many people were and it was, it was a bad one too. Yeah, it was... Um, I questioned myself really, do I really want to do it and whatnot. I had a few months. I thought the first few months I get my life together, I set up a few businesses, folks on that and then I thought, I don't want to ever leave this sport thinking to myself, oh, I could have done this, I could have done that and be a better person, thought to myself, I'll just get back in the gym, rehab it out, and now, do you know what, I'm in, a, I'm in a better position. I've got good people around me. I've just teamed up with Darren Barker, Joe Kawasaki, got this opportunity in Match Room, and I'm on the undercard of Katie Taylor, so things are looking up. I'd like to get out again in the uh, end of November, December, but yeah, get this job out of the way Saturday, and uh, I think things will open up for me. Well, great to have you back on the card, and good luck, and looking forward to hearing your many supporters on Saturday night. Another great young prospect in John Hedges, who I see his shoulders and the back growing every day right in front of me. John, looking fantastically well. And a real fight for you on Saturday. 3 and 0 opponent who has plenty of ability, but time now for you to step up. Still a young man, but starting to really find your feet in the pro ranks. Yeah, exactly that, Eddie. I've been busy, been active. Take on a 3 and 0 opponent this, week, uh, this Saturday. He's had a couple of knockouts and uh, yeah, it's going to be a good step up for me, but it's the right time, like you say. It's just about putting it on, uh, putting a good performance on the night. How much do you feel that you've changed physically since entering the pro ranks? It wasn't that long ago, but you've been nice and active and I know plans, if you're triumphant on Saturday, to try and get one more in this year. But been learning a lot down with Johnny and the team, with Mark Tibbs and, and really maturing in and out of the ring. Yeah, exactly that, Eddie. And, uh, that's the thing, I'm only 20 years old, but I'm taking all these experiences in. I've always boxed on massive shows, thank you to yourself and uh, Matt True and Banner. So I've been, uh, I've been in the limelight all, since, since my debut, and it's, it's a real honour. And uh, I think this is what's built me into the character I am today, and it's going to be a big performance for me Saturday. It's going to show the step up in opponent, but you're going to see a step up in a uh, performance at the same time. So I'm really looking forward to it. Back in front of my own crowd as well in London. It's going to be enjoyable, and I'm, uh, I'm going to shine. Oh, big fight for you on Saturday. Big support as well. Looking forward to hearing that. As there is for the debut of Maisie Rose Courtney. Of course, a very important 
um, female element to this card with, with Katie Taylor and of course Ellie Scottney as well but Maisie Rose although you're only young I feel like you've been around for years obviously early stages and early part of your amateur career in the Repton gym plenty of amateur experience and looking forward to the start of your professional journey on Saturday. Yeah, I can't wait. It's, I've been boxing my whole life, do you know what I mean? It's, I've, I'm born for this, so I'm very lucky and I'm very thankful to Eddie for giving me this opportunity to, on a big stage, to finally have my debut. And yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait to start eating some people. <laughs> I think one of your biggest compliments is obviously the, the welcoming you've had from Tony Simms' gym. I know Kevin Mitchell, you know, training you, a fantastic fighter in his day and a great trainer as well, but the first female fighter in Tony Sims's elite gym and you know a lot of these old school trainers sometimes struggle to get their head around it. He met you, he was so excited he didn't stop talking about you and it's, it's a great gym to be a part of down there. Yeah it's, it's crazy really, I pinch myself like every time I go down there to say that I'm the first woman to box out of the Matchroom Elite gym but I just got to prove, prove why I've been given that opportunity, prove why Kevin and Tony and all the boys down the gym have let me have that opportunity, do you know what I mean? And yeah, time to shine. Like, I'm the first woman to box out of Repton and the first woman to box out of the Tony Simpsons gym, so only time will tell. And when you did start down the Repton, obviously looking at women's boxing, probably didn't believe that the opportunities would present themselves like they have now. You know, to think now we're just off the back of you know, a great fight between Shields Marshall, of course, the epic one, Taylor Serrano, Baumgardner, Maya getting the victory. Every week there's major female fights and what a time, what an opportunity to be a female fighter now and rightfully getting the opportunities you deserve. Yeah, exactly. If we go back five years ago, this, this wouldn't have happened. You know what I mean? A woman headlining and being a woman to fight on a women's headline show, it's unbelievable. So, yeah, I'm very grateful. And yeah, just right timing, really. Well, good luck for your pro debut on Saturday night. Thank you. Johnny Fisher, welcome. We're looking forward to seeing a couple of thousand of your lot at the Wembley Arena on Saturday night. Big fight for you, although Mr. Dominic Musu, who we thought was here, is actually running late from the airport. Rumours that he saw the size of you and decided to just slip over to Starbucks, but apparently he is on his way. It's a big opportunity for you back in London. Huge crowd in Sheffield last time. But things get in a little bit more serious now as we step up the levels of opposition. Definitely. Thank you, Eddie. Um, yeah, Dominic Musa was running a bit late, but he's a big, strong, proud man. I'm not overlooking him at all. As you said, he's been in with some good opposition, and he's uh, going to bring the heat on Saturday night. But I've been training for a very long time. Uh, I've been here uh, in Vegas with Joe Joyce, preparing him for Joseph Parker. And I've come back, trained with Mark Tibbs, and I'm ready to go. It's been a very long time, and I'm feeling in great condition. Last time out in Sheffield, you're starting to fight opposition that are really coming to win now. And this is, this is no difference. We've seen him against some high-level heavyweight opposition, always trying to win the fight. But as we saw in the last fight, after you know, a, a lively opening round, these fighters that come to fight are going to start showing the best of your ability. Definitely. Um, I prefer it when someone comes to fight. The openings become available. Um, Reisinger came and gave it a go. Dominic Musi will come and give it a go. But my intentions are to get that stoppage, get that win, or however it needs to come. I'm here to win. I've been training so hard, and I'm just excited to get in front of that Romford Bull Army, that, that fan base I've got, and try and give them a good night of entertainment. Well, exciting heavyweight fight. Johnny Fisher against Dominic Mazil and the Romford Bull Army in full effect at Wembley on Saturday. Before we go to the top table, you must make sure you pay attention to this fight on Saturday night. Mickey Ellison, Central Area Heavyweight Champion against Thomas Whitaker Hart. These area titles are very, very entertaining, but this is a fight, in my opinion, that has all the ability to go on and be for the British Light Heavyweight Championship. Mickey Ellison coming off a big win, and Thomas Whitaker Hart, part of the GB setup. Many people talking about him as the future, not just of the domestic light heavyweight division, but beyond as well. We'll go to the champion, Mickey Ellison. Mickey, Big opportunity for you, big TV card, great fight, coming off a, a fantastic win. Yeah, um, first of all I want to say thank you Eddie for this opportunity. Um, for me this is what dreams are made of and I'm just going to enjoy the moment and soak it all up and go out there and get the job done. Thomas Whittaker Hart, outstanding amateur pedigree. No real experience as a pro and hasn't really done many fights where he's had to go to deep waters, but you expect this one to go there on Saturday? Yeah, um, obviously he's had a brilliant amateur career, but 
when you turn over into the pros, things are different. And uh, when I'm going to be stood in front of him for 10 rounds, we'll, we'll see if he wants to swim in the deep waters. Thomas, obviously we've been wanting to step you up for a while now. This is the perfect fight for you as you move on to the British Light Heavyweight Championship. But good domestic dust-up, two big, strong light heavyweights. It's going to be a great fight on Saturday. Yeah, um, I'm excited, to be honest. Um, the first time I've had a proper eight-week training camp, and I know what I'm going to bring on Saturday. And I've got an opponent who's coming to win, and always tough, and he likes to fight. And I think you're going to see a lot. A lot better than me when no one had that in front of me and don't get me wrong he's going about me amateur pedigree and that but don't worry I can fight so I'm looking forward to it and a, a shout out for the gym as well because you know when you started with Joe there wasn't many fighters with him all of a sudden probably the strongest stable in the UK right now the addition of Josh Taylor Kevin Ajarko of obviously yourself and many others as well it's, it's absolutely flying up there in Liverpool yeah it's just training alongside some good athletes like but um I don't really think about that too much, I just focus on myself, but it's just good to have to banter with the lads in the gym and good to see what they do and looking up to them as well. So, oh, Good luck, it's a cracking fight to headline out before the bell part of the show on Saturday. We move to the top table, some tremendous fights, particularly this one, Gary Cully against Belmedi, it's 19-0 against 17-0. Gary Cully, who we believe is the future of the lightweight division, his first fight as official matron fighter. Uh, Belmedi, we'll start with you, I think, by your translator as well. Um, big fight for you on Saturday. Big opportunity. Two unbeaten fighters. We expect a great fight. Parle ça le micro en cas. Donc je disais c'est un gros combat pour toi qui t'attend samedi. Tu veux combattre un vaincu. Oui. Qu'est-ce que tu penses de, de ce combat ben, Déjà c'est un gros challenge. Mais vraiment confiant, prêt. Et euh, je suis prêt à ce que le monde entier connaisse le bombardier marocain. C'est un gros challenge pour lui. Il est prêt et confiant. Donc il est prêt à montrer et à shine dans le UK samedi uh, night. Thank you very much. Gary, um, when you signed with us, you said you didn't want to muck around. When the matchmaker sent you a 19 and 0 opponent, I wasn't quite sure whether you'd accept it. You accepted it straight away. Shows the route you want to take, the speed you want to move at. He's a, a very good fighter. I've watched him, good puncher as well. Gonna be a great fight. Yeah, um, first of all, just a big shout out to Kay. Um, she's been paving the way for Irish fighters like myself since the amateur days and all the way into the pro ranks now. So my first time to get to share a card with Kay, um, it's a big honor for me, so shout out to her. Um, as far as myself, yeah, I, I believe I put on a big performance back in March, um, beating a former world champion, Miguel Vasquez, and I want to move forward towards world titles in 2023. So. This is the right step in doing so. 16 and 0 opponent, but I believe that these are the type of fights that uh, that I need and that I show up for. So these are the type of fights that I wanted. I've said from the start that I don't want to mess around, and uh, I'm excited to put in a big performance and, like I said, move towards winning world titles 2023. Obviously, great win against Vasquez last time. If you're triumphant on Saturday, you know some of the names that we talked about for this fight: Angel Fierro, who's number three with the WBO. You really one or two fights away from putting yourself in a very close mandatory position for the world title. 100% big names, big division, um, some big fights to be made so I'm excited to be a part of it and like I said Saturday is just the next step for me and I have to take that step before I'm in the big fights with these big names so we'll be looking after this fight on Saturday um, towards the names of like Fierros and uh, your big names in the, in the lightweight division and I can't wait to be a part of it. But first of all, we have to deal with business Saturday night. Yeah, first of all Saturday, I know Casey will put the earmuffs on for this one as well, but there are a lot of Irish fighters talking about the potential of, of Croke Park next year. It would be some moment if you could fight for a world title on that card as well. 100%. That's a, it's been a vision of mine ever since I've been a kid, so to, to be able to actually see that as a possibility now is massive and like I said Katie's been leading the charge for the past over the past 10 years and to share a card with her in Ireland would be would be absolutely would be history for Ireland it would be special so um yeah I believe that it's a possibility now and it looks like it can happen so hopefully the Irish get behind us and uh, we can fill Croke Park next year well, great fight Cully against Belmedi two unbeaten lightweights looking to challenge for the world title on Saturday 
I feel a bit strange talking, I keep mentioning women's boxing, I think we've actually just got to stop talking about that. I think right now, actually, the female fighters are putting the male fighters to shame in terms of the challenges that they're accepting and taking. And actually, in terms of the entertainment that we're seeing in the ring, we've got the, the legend of, of I say we're female boxing on Saturday night in Katie Taylor, but we've also got a young debutant, and we've got a tremendous fight for the European Super Bantamweight title, one that will lead to a world championship shot for the winner. I believe the winner of this fight will become mandatory challenger for the IBF world title against Shanika Johnson. It's a massive opportunity for Ellie Scottney, taking on the champion Mary Romero, who will start with. Mary, welcome. Um, we've seen you on a number of matchroom cards. You're looking for that shot for the world title. One more victory on Saturday, and that world title will present itself. We should have a great fight with Ellie Scottney. Sí, bienvenido en primer lugar. Eh, obviamente has estado en muchas carteleras de Matchroom y estás buscando esa oportunidad de un título mundial, ¿no? Que si esa victoria el sábado eso te da la opción de esa pelea por un título mundial. Sí, en primer lugar estoy muy agradecida por la oportunidad que, que me estás dando. Y sí que estoy buscando la oportunidad de poder hacer un mundial y este cinturón no lo voy a regalar. Lo voy a luchar con todas mis fuerzas porque este cinturón no es solo mío, es de mi ciudad y es de mis dos hijos que están ahí día a día en todo mi entrenamiento sufriendo lo mismo que yo sufro y lo voy a dar todo con, con, con mi vida por ese cinturón y por esa oportunidad que, que creo que la merezco y, y sueño con ella desde, desde niña y estoy agradecida. Yes, so first and foremost, thank you very much. Uh, I'm always appreciative of these opportunities that you give me, and that's what I'm looking for, a world title shot. And let me just say that this belt, I'm not going to give up for free. It's, it's a belt that doesn't belong to just myself, it belongs to my city, it belongs to my two kids who are at training every day, suffering with me. So I'm going to give absolutely everything for this belt Saturday. We saw you at the open workout yesterday, all action as always. Ellie Scottney always comes to fight. We should get a tremendous fight between you two. Sí, obviamente te vimos en, en el workout de los medios ayer y eres de toda acción. Ella también. Tenemos que esperar una grande pelea, ¿no? El sábado. Claro que sí. Ella es lo mismo que yo. Lucha por un sueño igual que yo. Tiene su, su objetivo y el sábado se verá todo. Yo voy a luchar con toda mi fuerza y con todo mi corazón y sobre todo con, con la fuerza de mi hijo y voy para adelante y, y ese cinturón se viene para España sí o sí. Yeah, of course, she's exactly the same as me. She's also fighting for her dream. So I'll be putting absolutely everything into this on Saturday. My heart, everything for my children to, to achieve that dream on Saturday. Thank you, Mary. Gracias. Ellie, talking about things getting real for, for some people, getting really real for you, but you're on a tremendous run. I feel like the matchmaking on the route to the World Championship has been perfect with Gianni, first of all, great win against Cecilia Roman. This time, a very strong, very rugged fighter in Cecilia Roman, uh, sorry, in Mary Romero, to put yourself in a position finally to fight for the world title. Yeah, for sure. As soon as I turned over, I always said I wanted to do stuff the right way, and I feel like from the get-go, I've took the right fights at the right time. And this is, you know, like we say, it's the, the final box to be ticked, and I'm going to have to put in the performance of my life, but I'm more than ready. You're a very disciplined fighter, very, you know, technically fantastic, but you do also love to get involved in, in a war in there. I've seen Mary Romero up close. You know what you're going to get every time. Strong, rugged, tough. And it's going to be a, a high-maintenance fight for you on Saturday night. As, as clean as you want to keep it, you're ready to go to deep waters. Yeah, I've not got a nose like this for no reason. I wasn't born with it, so I'm prepared to fight, but I do understand that, you know, I'm going to be boxing and I'll be using my brain the most, but if it comes to biting down and going for it, yeah, I'm ready. And finally, this fight likely to put the winner in a mandatory position for Shanika Johnson. Also, we have Maylene Rivas as a world champion in a division as well. You see him fighters become world champion and unifying very quickly and a lot of undisputed champions in various divisions now but ready to perform on Saturday and hopefully move to the world championships and dreams to unify the division as well. Yeah for sure but you know a dream of mine is to win the European title first and yeah that's all that matters. Thank you Ellie. Tremendous fight between Ellie Scottney and the European champion Mary Romero likely to become mandatory for the IBF Super Bantamweight title. This fight for me is probably my fight of the night. I think he's such an unbelievable fight because when you bring Kiko Martinez to town, you know exactly what you're going to get. Who can forget November the 13th last year, uh, Kiko Martinez taking a battering from Kid Galahad for six, seven rounds and scoring the knockout of the year to become world champion again. I believe that this is 
a chance for him to become a five-time or six-time European champion on Saturday, but also a chance for him to put himself back in line to become a three-time world champion. Kiko Martinez is, for me, just one of the all-time greats of Spanish boxing and a tremendous man, tremendous fighter. But so is this man on my right. And if you haven't seen, and I'm, everybody in this room would have seen, his victory over Karim Gurphy last time out at the O2 Arena. It was just one of the most stunning things I've ever seen. Both eardrums perforated. And this is a young man that everything seems to have gone against him in his career. He starts out in that fight, and I just thought to myself, you know, I looked at his dad, looked at Dave Colgan, and I thought, this kid cannot get a break. All of a sudden now, he can't stand up. He's got his leg on the turnbuckle. He can't leave the turnbuckle because he's going to fall over. And now he's just left with one pot shot to try and score a remarkable victory. It came. And you deserved it because you've had so much bad luck. It was time that you got some, I'll say it's luck, but it was time that you got that special moment. And this is an IBF eliminator for the world title. This is the moment that Jordan Gill could move on and get what he's worked so hard for from the sport of boxing, which is a big, big fight, a shot at the world title. But to do it, he has to overcome one of the strongest, one of the toughest, one of the most annoying fighters in the world in Kiko Martinez that just will not lay down and will not give up. Kiko, I'm going to start with you. I always say this when you come over, you look like Benjamin Button. You look younger now than you did 10 years ago. Are you ready for Saturday night? Siempre lo digo, mismo cuando vienes aquí parece como Benjamin Button porque no me envejes nunca, siempre es más joven aún que la última vez. ¿Listo para el sábado? Sí, he venido, vengo listo, vengo entrenando durante mucho tiempo, esforzándome, cuidándome, eh, no teniendo vacaciones, no teniendo días libres. Eh, llevo mucho tiempo trabajando para, para volver a tener una oportunidad y vengo muy ilusionado de nuevo y, y espero y deseo volver a triunfar el sábado por la noche. Sí, yeah, so I'm, I'm really ready. I've been training, I've been putting in the effort. I've had no holidays, no free time, no days off. I've been working hard and you know, I'm, I've got that kind of love back again. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to, to getting my victory on Saturday. When you lost your world title to Josh Warrington in a, in a great fight, you broke his jaw in that fight. I mean, it was a, a brutal affair. You talked about the possibility of retiring, but obviously you went back, you felt great physically, and, and you're back for another run at the World Championship. Sí, cuando perdiste esa pelea contra Josh Warrington fue una pelea excepcional también. Le rompiste también la mandíbula en esa pelea, eh, pero hablaste un poco de la posibilidad de retirarte, pero al final te diste cuenta de que eh, estabas entendiendo bien físicamente y querías volver y, y tener esa otra opción para llegar a tener un título un día. Sí, lo pensé muchísimas veces el, el retiro. O sea, obviamente ya... El tiempo no está a mi favor, eh, cada pelea cuenta para, para el retiro, se puede pasar o me puedo retirar, pero sentía que todavía tengo la oportunidad para, para volver a sorprender a más de uno, eh, para volver a ser campeón y poder irme como yo quiero, irme del deporte siendo campeón mundial y, y volver a hacer historia porque realmente lo que me hace feliz es estar en estos eventos que, que a mí tanto me hace vivir y me hace tanto soñar es, es estar aquí para pelear y, y, y estar en, en grandes peleas como las que me está dando Marun este este tiempo so yeah of course you know I did go back and I did think about retirement and obviously you know father time is not on my side and you know every fight counts and it, and it, and it takes its toll on you so I did think about the, the option of retirement but I felt good and I felt like I could go on and have more opportunities and, and, and surprise people again more than one person again uh, so I wanted to go out on my terms as well I feel like I still want to have a shot and I feel like I can get a shot to become world champion and I just love being part of these events they give me life they they, they breathe new life into me and I just want to be involved in such big fights like this with alongside Matchroom and finally, Kiko, you said that you don't believe that Jordan Gill is of your level on Saturday night. Why do you win this fight on Saturday? Si hablamos un poco de diferentes niveles, ¿por qué crees que vas a ganar la pelea el sábado por la noche? Porque he hecho un trabajo bueno. He trabajado con Gaby Sarmiento. Hemos trabajado con ciencia. Volvemos a estar felices. Volvemos a ser nosotros. Y, y eso era lo, lo más importante para mí, ¿no? Volver a coger la confianza que que me ha dado Sarmiento y, y sentimos que todavía podemos dar ese, ese golpe en la mesa y volver a ser campeones de, de Europa. Yeah, because we've been working really well, you know, I've got my new training now with uh, Gabby Sarmiento and it's been a really happy camp. 
You know, we've been working hard and I've not lost that kind of confidence going into the fight. And I feel that once again, we, you know, I can, I can find that shot that can make me become European champion. Thank you, Kiko. Jordan, saw a, a picture of you yesterday in your trunks, very jealous, some shape. The best shape of your career, I think you'd probably agree with that, the moment of your career on Saturday night when, in all honesty, it looked like your career might be over after the Gwerfi fight. I don't know where you would have gone from there after suffering all the different disappointments you've had, but that one shot changed everything, as they say in boxing, and now on the verge of challenging for a world title in a fight defending your European title, in a fight that everybody's excited about against a great fighter in Kiko Martinez. Got to be full of excitement this Saturday. I'm really excited, uh, really excited. So this is a big fight. As a boxer, you get into the sport to, uh, to have the big fights and, and they're finally starting to come. So get this fight won on Saturday and I want a world title shot. And uh, training's gone great. Um, been staying at Johnny Fisher's house and uh, been eating Chinese with him. That's why I've got extra, extra muscle on the biceps. It all helps. And uh, now I'm looking forward to a fantastic fight. Kiko Martinez is a great fighter. He's a legend of Spanish boxing, like you said. And, uh, you know, you can't not have respect for him. Two-time world champion, world champion in his last fight. If I box him in February, it'd be for the world title. But it's October, and this is my European title, and I'll be leaving with it. How important is it for, for fighters and a strong message for young fighters to have that resilience in the sport, to understand that it won't always go your way? I mean, if people knew about your setbacks, I mean, I can't have lost count of the times that Dave Colwell's phoned me up and said, you're not going to believe this, but this has happened to Jordan, or he's out of that fight, or, you know, we have to delay the comeback and so forth. But when you look at, you know, one of your best mates, Lee Wood, your stories are, are very similar in the respect of you've been grinding and grinding for years and years, come back from defeats, didn't get opportunities, got injured, plenty of times to walk away from the sport, but you've stayed active. He's now world champion. You're on the verge of fighting for a world title as well. You, you've got to stay in it, and you've got to stay, you've got to believe in the, in the dream. That's it, you know, we love boxing. We, this is our life, we've got our whole lives into it. So the easy thing to do in hard times is quit. And I think we've both shown, you know, that we're tough, uh, especially earlier on in, this, in the year. But so is Kiko. Kiko um, has had losses, and I think he's a great example to, to young fighters coming through that, you know, stick with it, keep coming, in, and, and your opportunity will come. So, yeah, I think you've got to be resilient in this game. Like I said, I've had so many setbacks, I've had hand injuries, knee injuries, perfect eardrums, I've had thyroid disease to deal with, and it's just one thing after another. But I've got a good feeling. I think we're going to be on a good run now, and I'm looking forward to uh, getting this fight one. And a very quick word on the fight itself. This guy's a nightmare. He's relentless. You saw in the Kid Galahad fight. He's never out of the fight, even in the Josh Warrington fight, back and forwards till the fight was stopped, broke his jaw in that fight. You know exactly what you're in for on Saturday night. It's going to be a tough fight, um, but to be, to be the best, you have to beat the best. And to get to world level, you have to beat guys like Keith and Martinez. He's world level. Um, and yeah, I'm just looking forward to it. I think there's no way that this fight can't be a fantastic fight. So uh, tune in. Well, everyone excited for that one. The European Featherweight Championship and an eliminator for the IBF World title.